Yes, good morning, everyone. Good morning. This is Chris Abraham live. I'm live with John Aarons. John is, is streaming live from New York City. How you doing there, John? Hey, Chris. I'm great. Thanks for having me. the go team. We're doing the go team, and we're doing go time today, which is a new show for teachers thinking about the material in a, in a different way. And I want you to have fun with this, okay, team? We're going to cover some material and have fun. And uh, I couldn't think of a more creative and interesting person than John Aarons to help me with this. He's a Grammy award-winning artist, uh, and he's performing live for us. This is awesome. Well, you know, Chris, you can't have your own show without your own theme song. Man, I can't do this without you. I really appreciate it. Until foundations, practice, certification. Christian, your card, go have the go time. Hey team. All right, so we're gonna start today with go time here. And we're gonna start, we're gonna, we're gonna go through some core ideas on the foundations of reading exam. This is that that test that's out there. It's called the 90, but this is one of those exams that's being rewritten. I want to thank John. I want to thank John Aarons for, for being with us this morning. I'll, I'll see you, and I'll see you all week, too. I'll see you tomorrow morning, okay? All right, guys. Be safe and, and keep learning. All right. I want you to have a great day. You're a miracle. You're a miracle. All right. I'll see you, John. See you, guys. All right, team. So we're going to start. We're going to go through these ideas. We're going to go through these ideas, and we're going we're gonna to talk through. We're going to talk through foundations of reading. I want to start by highlighting highlighting uh, some key ideas here. And, and, and first and foremost, when we say the 90, it, it, in about a couple of months, it's gonna turn to the 190. So we're, we're gonna be studying for both the 90 and the 190. That's what we're talking about right now. This, this new Foundations of Reading exam that's being reworked. And, and in this right here, we have this pyramid, very, very important. It doesn't include everything, but it's got a lot of core concepts and, and things that you would definitely want to know for the Foundations of Reading exam. You'd need to know your phonemic awareness and your phonics and your concepts of print. You'd absolutely have to have an awareness of uh, text structures and reading fluency and vocabulary and how this helps with reading comprehension. All these are core ideas that make up the Foundations of Reading. The new test that comes out stresses uh, more information more specific concepts. So you're going to have a lot more vocabulary, more specific vocabulary that comes up. So it's not just going to be phonological awareness and phonemes. You'll have more things like phoneme segmentation and blending and alconin boxes. There'll just be more specific ideas connected to phonological and phonemic awareness. And it doesn't matter whatever it is. It'll, it'll be more than phonics. There'll be things involving CDC words and controlled R vowels. You know, so everything's going to get a little bit more specific. It, it's not adding anything new. It's just focusing in a little bit more on what you've already had. And I thought today, since we're going to be talking about this new foundation to reading test, and, and we're going to go through all these ideas, I thought I'd use a case study to help think about it. So, so when I do this, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on uh, all the ones that I've highlighted so far. So we have here phonemic awareness. What's phonemic awareness? Let's just go through the, the definitions of each one of these real quick. Okay, we're gonna go through the definitions of phonemic awareness, concepts of print, phonics, fluency, text structures, comprehension, just real quick. You know, just as, just because this, this stuff right here, right? <clears throat> if you wanna think about it, the ideas that I have highlighted here, let me, let me clear off the screen a little bit. These ideas, uh, they make up the bulk of your exam. I mean, I would say for the multiple choice, these ideas make, this is 90% of your tests are these ideas. Your awareness of phonemic awareness and concepts of print and phonics and fluency and text structures, vocabulary and comprehension, it's 90% of your grade. So these ideas are really, 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 really important. And in particular, these ideas and how they connect to the two essays that you have. Let me see if I can, I can clear this off so it's a little clearer, all right? Your, your multiple choice, those 100 questions is worth, uh, I'm sorry, 80% of your, your score, 80%, all right? 
but but your essay, your essay on um, your two essays is worth 20%. And those two essays are made up of these ideas. When we talk about our essays, we're going to be looking specifically at aspects of fluency, oral fluency, and aspects of comprehension. But you know, still it's made up of these ideas that are that are there. So these are foundational ideas that we're thinking about that are going to make up your test for both the the multiple choice questions, which, and, and the open response. So let's just think about these ideas real quick. Just as a review, I'm sure that you've, you've, you've thought about this before, but, but you know, we've talked about phonological and phonemic awareness before, but phonological awareness and phonemic awareness, that has to do with sounds, right? Hearing sounds. And there's a lot of different levels to hearing sounds, but any reading activity could involve the child hearing rhymes and alliteration like mouse house or flopsy mopsy we take the word flopsy mopsy the the end sound of flopsy and mopsy is a rhyme or mouse house that end sound mouse house or in the word cat hat these words rhyme we talk about a leader alliteration peter piper picked a peck of pickled peppers that's an example of alliteration peter piper we have our, our Peter and our Piper. Alliteration is a repetition of the first sound. So when we think about phonological awareness, a basic awareness of hearing sound is being able to hear uh, rhymes like cat, hat, and Peter Piper, alliteration, hearing that the sounds have similarities in the beginning and end of words. We could do harder stuff. For, for a preschool, we could ask them to identify how many syllables they hear in a word. Like, for example, in the word wonderful, we could have them clap out how many syllables they hear in wonderful. And hopefully we'd have them be like wonderful is made up of wonderful, three syllables. Let me just write that down. Wonderful. Okay, that would be an activity for intermediate phonological awareness. And then we have more advanced phonological awareness. I'll go back to the word... Uh, house mouse the word house we're, when we talk about individual phonemes and this is phonemic awareness we're dealing with hearing and identifying manipulating individual sounds in a word so in the word house and in the word mouse well if i asked a child to uh, a preschooler uh to identify the initial sound isolate the initial sound in these words house mouse well that would be an example of phonemic awareness, where they're isolating a specific sound. Or maybe if I ask them to identify the middle vowel in both in ma ows and house, the medial or middle vowel is the ow sound. Well, again, this is, you know, this is, you know, phonemic awareness. Okay. Okay. So just real quick, we just talked about phonological and phonemic awareness. Phonological awareness is hearing sounds. And it has a lot of different levels, hearing basic sounds like similarities in words in the beginning and end, that's rhyme and alliteration, hearing the individual syllables within a, within a word, a little bit more advanced. And then the more advanced stuff, the phonemic awareness stuff is hearing individual sounds in a word, like the, the initial sound, the middle sound or medial sound, the end sound in a word. All right. We, we also have here uh, on one of our, on our list right here, we, we have aspects of, let me find another one, concepts of print. This is everything to do with print and print awareness. And this is sort of a, a major idea, but this question is involving concepts of print. So, so this is anything with print, like things with directionality, reading from left to right, or, or, or book handling skills, like how I hold a book, how I, when I start at the title page and I move from the top to the bottom. These are all aspects and concepts of print, and they make up, you know, they, they're part of print awareness, which is print. The symbols that are on this page carry meaning, okay? So, so print awareness has all these different skills as well. No, no sound, just print. And they're connected to ideas, connected to print only, things involving print. Okay, so let's go back and review real quick. So far on our triangle, we've... We've really quickly, let me clear this off. We've just really quickly just talked about phonemic awareness, which is, and phonological awareness, which is the hearing the sound stuff, and concepts of print, which is the print stuff. 
And now we're going to really quickly do phonics. Phonics is like dealing with words like CBC words, like cat and hat and bat. Or maybe we're going to do a little CCVC words like uh, ship, you know, or, or some, some other CBC word, okay? Now, now each one of these, I'll do ship and uh, let's do, uh, let's do, it's not a CBC word, but let's do sheep. Okay, I guess that's our CCVV uh, C word, okay? But let's not get caught up on the actual CBC stuff. Let's just focus in on the actual words. So let's clear this off here. Let's, let's talk about phonics. And let's just really, let me clear it off. Let's just look at these, uh, let's just look at these three words. Cat, which is a CBC word, ship, and sheep. And when we talk about phonics, we're talking about letter sound correspondence, matching up the letters here with their corresponding sounds or phonemes. And all these words right here, they, they represent some sort of, uh, to read cat, ship, sheep, you need to have an awareness of that letter sound correspondence to do that. Now, this is a CBC word where every, every symbol, every letter, or every grapheme matches up with the sound. So we have a k. Okay, that's, that's not that bad. The sheep is a little harder. This one has uh, a, the SH. The SH are two consonants that make one sound, and, and we call that what? What phonics rule is that? That's a diagraph, more specifically a, a vowel, di uh, sorry, a consonant diagraph. And in the word sheep, it has that same consonant diagraph, that phonics rule. We say a consonant diagraph, it's a phonics rule where it's two consonants that make one sound. It also has the double E. Two vowels that make one sound is a vowel diagraph. Okay, <clears throat> I'm just having doing this fast, but in addition to knowing sounds, in addition to having awareness of print, we talk about phonics, is talking about matching up those sound letters with sounds, and this helps with phonics, and this helps essentially with decoding. Decoding is that process of taking the letters and matching them up with the sounds to pronounce a word correctly. And, and the opposite of decoding, decoding is the process of taking the sound, the letters, matching them up with sounds to pronounce them. That's what we say is decoding. The opposite of decoding is encoding, taking the sounds and spelling out the word. Taking the word cat orally, taking the, the sounds in cat and turning cat k -t, into letters, cat. Essentially, encoding is spelling the word. And then we have aspects of fluency, being able to pronounce words with speed, accuracy, and expression. We have things like text structure, like are we dealing with a narrative text with story elements or an expository text with more text features? And then we have reading comprehension. And I've just said uh, the major ideas that are connected to uh, the bulk of your test. And I thought that, you know, I should probably uh, do it another way because this is just so much. So what I thought is give you a way to think about how you do your studies is uh, to understand that the bulk of the test here are not only these ideas, but the bulk of the test, okay? And all these concepts exist every time you read. For example, let's take this one right here, little Peter Rabbit. Who's, who's read Peter Rabbit? The Tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. Now, I love Peter Rabbit here. We could say if we're thinking about it and going through this pyramid here, I think what we'll do with this pyramid is we'll talk through what's going on in this book, looking at everything that's going on in this pyramid. So when we read over Peter Rabbit, we're going to take a perspective of a phonemic awareness perspective or a concept of print or phonics perspective. We'll do a little fluency. We'll talk about text structure, and we'll do reading comprehension in the first two pages of this book. All those ideas exist in this book and every time you read. Not all of them, but the bulk of them do. So when you read a book like this, we could say Peter Rabbit is a beginner reader book. So first, second grader who's just started with word identification strategies and is building their reading fluency. It's a book that has a lot of tier one vocabulary. We think of tier one vocabulary as those high frequency everyday words like names, like uh, names, animals, everyday words, 
We also have things like function words. Function words are made, or, or, or a lot of function words um, are also sight words. So we also have a lot of sight words existing in, in this everyday tier one vocabulary. So everyday tier one vocabulary is high frequency words uh, that we use for everyday communication. They're made up of content words like nouns and verbs, adjectives, adverbs. That's like Peter, rabbit. They're also tail. It's also made up of function words like uh, articles and and all sorts of that. All those and all those grammatical features within within a word, conjunctions, prepositions. Those are function words. All right. And and when we think about this one right here, let, let's just look at the first page. I'll read it to you. As I read it. Uh, let's start, um, let's start and I'll read it first and then we'll talk about some of the things that are going on. And well, let's start as I read it. I want you to listen, listen and listen to the sounds that you hear. Think that you're a preschooler and you're listening to the sounds. So we'll do a little phonemic and phonological awareness activity. Ready? I'm actually going to read it to you. I know you could read it, but since we're talking about phonological and phonemic awareness, which is a sound thing. And I want to do sound activities connected to phonological and phonemic awareness. It requires you to listen, to hear the sound. So let's begin. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits, and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. Now, my dears, said old Ms. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there and he was put into a pie by Ms. McGregor. <laughs> Let's look at what's here. Let's, uh, starting with sound, a child that's hearing this and they hear the words flopsy, mopsy, and cottontail. Well, in terms of phonological and phonemic awareness, on a basic level of hearing sounds, I'll make a little triangle here in terms of hearing sounds, okay? And we have the word level, the syllable level, and the phoneme level. When that child hears Mopsy and Flopsy, well, they probably hear that Mopsy and Flopsy have a similar ending. Is that right? Mopsy, Flopsy, similar ending. So they're hearing a rhyme. This would be basic phonological awareness. So basic foundational phonological awareness is hearing similarities in the beginning and ending of words. A child that hears that flopsy and mopsy rhyme, they have beginner phonological awareness. By the way, this is Chewy. I should have introduced him at the beginning of the show. He's going to be my co-host uh, in this uh, in this uh, learning activity. He'll chime in every once in a while. Okay. All right. If I were to ask a child even more advanced, if I were to uh, ask them, uh, my daughter, who's three and a half years old, flopsy, mopsy. What is the initial sound you hear in Mopsy or Flopsy? And if Olivia was able to say, oh, Flopsy has a F sound, Mopsy has a M sound. Well, then not only would the child be able to hear similarities on a word level, but now when they take the word uh, Mopsy and they identify that initial phoneme, it starts with the M sound. Well, then they're doing phonemic awareness because they're hearing and identifying a specific phoneme. And if they were to take that initial phoneme m in Mopsy and substitute it for fl in Flopsy, well, all of a sudden now they're doing the most advanced form of phonemic awareness, which is hearing, identifying, and substituting or manipulating initial sounds. So on a basic level, this one page of the text contains all the activities you would need for a phonological and phonemic awareness activity. Think about that. Okay. I'll go back to our list here. Uh, I will I'll really quickly cross off this. In reading the first page of, uh, of Peter Rabbit, we have act an activity that is reinforcing phonological and phonemic awareness for beginners, intermediate, and advanced. How about just concepts of print when we think about this one right here, Peter Rabbit again? Well, concepts of print, first of all, when I ask my daughter to pick a book that she enjoys and she goes and grabs this right here, she, she does grab this, it's a big one, but we have much smaller ones. I'm not that mean, okay? She, we have really small versions of this book, okay? 
she's showing an awareness, so print awareness, that though these books that she can't necessarily read yet, these symbols on the page, whatever, whatever the book is, whatever it is that day, these symbols carry meaning. And that those symbols, even though she can't read it yet, those symbols carry meaning. So this is print awareness. And when we think of print awareness, we think of concepts of print like, like book handling skills, like how to hold the book. My daughter is very good at instructing me on how to hold the book, how to hold the book, just like her teachers do. Hold the book, start at the top of the page, point at the title, the pictures, go to the top of the page, go down, read from left to right. You know, these are all book handling skills, another concept of print. Well, guess what? In reading this book on Peter Rabbit, we're also reinforcing concepts of print and print awareness. Wow. Okay, there's that too. And we think of print awareness. This is something that's happening at a foundational level. So we're talking uh, preschool, nursery school, preschool. Phonological and phonemic awareness, hearing the sounds happening at a foundational level. So nursery school, preschool, and even earlier than that, but let's just say nursery school, preschool as a start. So both these two ideas that are here, phonological and phonemic awareness, hearing sounds, and activities involving print and print awareness, they're happening very early on for our, our nursery school students and our preschool students. Now let's talk about phonics. Let's look at this idea. And I and I, I dropped my pen. I gotta grab my pen real quick. How is this tape text? Let me fix my mic. How is this text teaching us about phonics, letter sound correspondence? Now I know some teachers out here they've tuned out. They're like, ah, what's going on here? I don't get it. I'll try to give you the secret of the test, T. All right. And I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll just I'll go to the next page because maybe maybe you don't see it here, but maybe if I read another paragraph to you, you will. Let me see. I want to make sure you can see this paragraph. I, I've skipped a little bit of the text, but um, but let me just read you this paragraph. It's really good. I, I really really enjoy it. So here I'm going to move this around and move it down a little bit. Here, let me let me get there. We go. I want to I want to I want to make sure that you can see it. Let's see if I can fix it here. Yep, I want you to see it. Uh, I have to have to hope that you could see it. Maybe I make it a little larger. I'll just assume that you can see it. Okay. It says here. Uh, then old Miss Rabbit took a basket and an umbrella and went through the wood to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Now let's imagine that our, let's say our beginner reader, let's say they're in first grade. So let's say first grade beginner reader or transitional reader in second grade. And then we wanna apply phonics. We think of phonics as letter sound correspondence, matching up letters with sounds to pronounce a word. Now within this text right here, these are all um, basic tier one words. So we're gonna deal with tier one vocabulary only. And some of these words are phonetically regular and some of them are irregular. But, but let's just stick with the, the ones that are phonetically regular first, okay? So I'm just going to pick some words out here. Uh, like, let's start with the word, uh, let's see, let's see, uh, buns. And I'll just do bun. Uh, bun is a what type of word? It's a what? It's a CVC word. Every grapheme, every letter matches up with one phony. It's a basic tier one word, bun, three letters, three sounds. A child that's able to take these three letters and match them up with their corresponding sounds has developed uh, basic phonics, okay? Letter sound correspondence. And it's got an end morpheme to attach to it. So it's a little harder because they not only have to get the initial, match up the initial end and me medial vowel of the word, but then they also have to remember not to forget that end morpheme sound. Okay, we'll deal with morphemes later, but they're there. How about a harder word? How about words like, um, let's do, uh, let's do wood. Uh, let me, uh, let's do wood and took. And let's keep going with this loaf. What's going on there? 
all these word, words, wood, loaf, took, they all have three sounds. W, uh, d, ch, uh, k, l, o, f. Okay, but what are these? Team, we're reviewing phonics now within this basic text that you started to laugh at me when I started to read it. What's the phonics rule here? Well, we have two vowels, two vowels that make one sound. What do we call that? Oh yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's called a vowel diagraph, right? Two vowels that make one sound are vowel diagraphs. A child that's able to a first grader or second gr transitional reader, a, a, a first grader, beginner reader that's able to read the words, decode the words, took, would, loaf, you know, they would have to have some basic phonics, like be aware of these vowel diagraphs. Or if we look, uh, or we could go to other words here. Uh, we have other, I'm going to do brown. Oh, this is a good one here. Brown. What's going on with brown? It's got several, it's, it's got several things going on, but what's this called? The bruh, the bruh, bruh, two sounds. They're blended together. The bra is a what? Yes, this is a blend. Let's think about that. Brown has a blend. And it also has the ow, ow. I'll put the ow over here like ow, like cow, ow. What's that? Now, it's, it's not a vowel diagraph because a vowel diagraph like the uh in, in w, w, uh, ud or o oh in loaf, right? A vowel diagraph is two vowels that make one sound. This right here is two things that are kind of blended together, co-articulated together. Ow, look at my mouth. Ow, you see it move, ow? We call that a what? A diphthong. A diphthong is when we blend two things together like ow. A diagraph is when we have two things that just make one sound. Oh, in loaf, it's oh, no movement of the mouth. Okay, now let's take a step back in terms of phonics. This text right here, in, in just in terms of phonics right here, it has CBC words like bun. It has uh, words that are a little bit harder, like uh, loaf uh, and wood. It has words that are a little bit harder, like brown. And it has even harder ones than that, but I, I don't want to go too far, okay? So we have CBC words within this beginner text. We have words with uh, vowel diagraphs. We have words with diphthongs and blends. A child reading Peter Rabbit would have to have those basic, basic phonic skills to decode the text. Give me a thumbs up. Chewy, what do you think? I think, okay, all right, well, all right. So within this text, this act of reading this text out loud to a student, there's some phonemic and phonological awareness going on. There's reinforcing concepts of print. If the child gets to the point where they start to read the text, well, they're developing and there's a lot of phonics within that text. We didn't even talk about the, uh, let's just go back to the text real quick. Within this text right here, we have a lot of, uh, uh, of sight words, those phonetically irregular words that, are, that exist in the text. For example, let's just let's look at some of those sight words real quick. A, is it a, a, or, or of, or to, or the, uh, or, or uh, and, or, or uh, then? Okay, we have these, these, these function words that exist in this text. They're high frequency words that, uh, that exist within this text that pronouns too. Okay, that we want a student to rapidly be able to decode. And some of these, some of these high frequency sight words are phonetically regular. Okay? Of. That doesn't uh that that's not a U sound, right? So so we have phonetically irregular words existing in these these sight words, these function words. Okay, so and these are words that we don't want a student to practice decoding, we just want them to memorize. Uh, and I'm sure I'm missing a couple here, but we're but we we have some major ideas here. So if these are these are sight words that I've circled really quickly, okay, that consist of function words like articles and conjunctions and pronouns, 
all those all those elements going on here. Well, then we also have you know content words. Now, not all the content words are phonetically regular, but just thinking about this right here, rabbit, old, old is describing rabbit. It's an adjective. Rabbit is a noun. Uh, bread is a noun. Brown is describing bread. We have buns, current. Okay, five. These are these are describing these things. Okay, so we have loaves. All these things are content words. All right, there's lots of them here. All right, I think I'm going a little too far, but within this text right here, we have a lot of tier one vocabulary, basic words. A lot of these words are phonetically regular. Some of these are phonetically irregular. We call those sight words, like the, of, and. Okay, and we could break up these tier one and tier two words into function words and content words. Content words are like nouns, adjectives, verbs, adverbs. The function words are like articles and conjunctions and pronouns. Blah. It's all here. All right. Do I want to do any more? Uh, what type of text is Peter Rabbit? If we are thinking about it in terms of uh, text genres, what type of text is it? What type of structure? It's a narrative text. Is that right? Different than expository. And narrative text has something called story elements. So let's go back to the original page here. I want you to I, see if you can keep up with me. I'm almost done. This narrative text right here. And in this narrative text, I'll, I'll clear it off. We have story elements. Like, for example, story elements are like a setting. Is this, does this have a, a clear-cut setting? Is there, is, there, is, there, is, there, is, there, is there a setting here? When we think about setting here, setting, 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 okay, is there is there a setting? Well, we have we have the four little rabbits. Do we have their names? We have where where does the story take place? Place underneath the root of a very big fir tree. We have a setting. Uh, um, there is a plot that goes on in this story, right? You know, Peter Rabbit gets into some trouble. We do have some characters, Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and our protagonist, Peter. So let's see. And our antagonist, McGregor. It's all here within the story in the first page. So we have here a narrative text. It has a setting. It has a plot. It has protagonists. That's the, the lead character, Peter, and an antagonist, McGregor. When we think about this on, on a basic level, it, uh, we could be using Peter Rabbit as a as early exposure to narrative text, and narrative texts have story elements. Okay, I think we could check off uh, this box here. Uh, what about? And it's a fiction, so we under the genre, it's fiction. Um, uh, it's fic. Uh, sorry, not fiction. Yeah, fiction. Fiction is the one that's not real. What about fluency? Well, we said fluency has to do with the child's ability to read with speed, accuracy, and expression. So if we saw a child reading this, I'll go to the next page here, and we saw that the child struggled with fluency, okay? If they, let's say, didn't know how to read the word loaf or brown or bread, well, within these words right here, we may say that loaf and bread, they, they've got these things here. And these things here are called, maybe it's an issue with uh, phonics that's holding up their fluency. Or maybe they had difficulty with the bruh, which is a blend, possibly holding up fluency. Or maybe they had difficulty with the ow in brown, diphthong. If a child is, is having difficulty with any of these words, we'd want to ask, is it an issue that's uh, with phonics involving vowel diagraphs or diphthongs or blends? So fluency and, and aspects of fluency could also be tested within, within this text for a beginner reader. And then there's finally comprehension, understanding what's going on. I don't know about you, but, but when I read this page on comprehension, there's a lot of strategies that I do to understand it. Uh, who does visualization? Who, who imagines here that they lived under a sand beak, under, the, under a sand bank? underneath the root of a very big fir tree. Now, I don't know what a fir tree is, but we have a big tree outside our house. So I always like to imagine, visualize that these rabbits here are living under a big tree. 
And in my mind, if I play that movie in my head, I'm understanding what's going on. That's visualization. Or we have all sorts of other things like uh, scheme engagement or text to self connections. Maybe you have a rabbit, okay? And maybe that you've had a rabbit, a pet rabbit. So when you read this story, you're making these connections. Well, right now, text to self connections or scheme engagement and visualization, these are reading comprehension strategies. We call these metacognitive reading comprehension strategies. All right, they're active interaction with the text to build meaning. Okay, so, so team, we're ending this episode right now, but, but I want you to think about this, okay? When you're going and you're studying for this exam here, And you're getting to all these new vocabulary words. And, and there's several other pages uh, of all these words here. That's all great. And doing the practice exams for the 90 and the 190, that's great. And knowing what phonemic awareness and concepts of print and phonics and fluency and text structures and comprehension are, you know, awesome, awesome. You know the definitions. But then can you take a ba basic text like Peter Rabbit? And within the basic text, can you look at that basic text? And within that text, within that text, can you pull out things that might be connected to phonemic awareness activities or aspects of concepts of print or maybe a little phonics going on? Can you think about the text as if a first grader was reading it or a second grader was reading it and think about fluency or gaps in fluency and word identification? Or maybe think about the text in terms of text structure and text features, or maybe even look at the text, doesn't matter what it is, and think about comprehension and what type of metacognitive reading comprehension strategies are going on. All right, so it's all here every time you read a story to a child. All these elements that are on your test exist. This is another way of reviewing all these major ideas which make up the bulk of your test. All right, team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. I want to give a shout out to Jonathan Ahrens, who was with us this morning. Thank you so much. He performed live from New York, and that's New York is going through a hard time right now. It's April 1st, team. Okay, well, I'll see you tomorrow. Tune in. Have a great day, everyone. Take care. Bye, everyone. Hi, team. This is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. Go Time is a live show for teachers to help them on their teacher certification exams. We're doing a different format with John Ahrens to help cover some material in a new and interesting way. Check it out if you can. Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. This spring, Go Academy is turning all the workshops into webinars. This is designed to help teachers continue studying and getting ready for their exams and stay at home at a safe distance. These classes are gonna be covering the same material as a regular workshop. We're gonna do them in seven hours and they're held on Saturdays and Sundays in the morning from 7 to 10.30 on Saturday and Sunday. I encourage you to check out a webinar. I'm sure you'll find them very helpful.